Welcome back to another episode of Bother Smooth Motion Graphics. Today it's all about rectangles. Did you know that you can do pretty crazy things with only one rectangle mask? I will show you today. In this episode I won't go too much into details with the basics at the beginning. If you want to have that more detailed I'll link down in the description below the first video I've done from the Bother Smooth Motion Graphics series. With that said we jump right into Fusion with our Fusion composition. To make our animation we need the background node, we plug it into our media out and I once again change the color to this darker orange and like in the first episode I've prepared here the clip I've showed you in the intro and I've put them here side by side so we have a perfect reference for what we want to create. So today it's all about rectangles, that means we select our background node and here select the rectangle so we have our rectangle shape here in the right viewer. Then we watch here what's happening first. The first 25 frames we have here a perfect rectangle growing from zero to this size. So that means we select our rectangle, disable the solid and we give a little bit of a border width. We have here the shape, only the outline and not the solid. So by only disable here the solid, you can create the outline. Then we only need to adjust here the width. So I make it to a perfect square like that and here on frame 25 we are at this size so that means here we create a keyframe on width and height because here on frame zero we reduce it all the way down to zero so that means i type here in zero press enter zero press enter and like that we created the first animation just like that then the next 10 frames we have only a break nothing is happening and after these 10 frames, we let the circle spin and while it's spinning, it transforms into a circle. And this animation is very, very cool and I will show you how to do it very easy. So 10 frames, nothing is happening and then we start with the spin. So that means here, after the 10 frames break on frame 35, I only create a keyframe here on angle because now we adjust the angle. Then I go further and it spins until around frame 70. So that means 35 frames long, the whole animation spins. And it spins very fast, so I type here in something that could be divided to 360, because 360 is one full rotation, and I want to have the square not something like that at the end, I want to have it straight, because later we're going to adjust it back to a rectangle, so I want to have the rectangle um, aligned to, to the whole frame. So that means here we type in a value of around 10,080. Press enter, so that means in these 35 frames the rectangle rotates itself for around, I don't know, 23 times or so. And here it stops and then we make the animation further. And while it's spinning we create now a circle out of it. And now you need to think one step further. So, so later we're gonna add the curves and you can see it, ro it starts to rotate very slow and then faster. So that means we don't transform the rectangle from the beginning on. We want to transform the rectangle to the circle here when we have the most motion blur and, and the high speed spinning. So that means somewhere around here we start to transform. So that means we go here to around frame 48, then here on the corner radius we set a keyframe, then we go here to frame 70 where the rotation ends. And we just put the corner radius all the way up to 1. This is why we created here the perfect square that when you put the corner radius to 1 we have a perfect circle. So you can see it spins and here it starts to transform to a circle and on frame 70 we have the perfect circle. And this is how you can transform the rectangle shape to a circular shape. So the next step, 10 frames break and then we create a shape like that. So that means we go to frame 80 and to create the next shape we need to adjust the width, the height and the corner radius. So we need three keyframes here. Then the animation is once again 25 frames. Then I first reduce the corner radius to around here maybe and now I just adjust the square to 
the exact same size like this. So in this 25 frames, it transformed to this. And the next step starts here on frame 130. And here this gray bar starts to slide in and that's it for the animation. And to animate this gray bar, we go here to frame 130 and we need for that a new background node. And we just plug it in here on the square from the background node. This automatically creates a new merge node. And we take once again a rectangle mask and plug it into the background. I change the color here to this gray, maybe a bit of an alpha channel. We can leave it a bit darker. And then I select the rectangle and make it around the same size. But now you see it's on the front, but here on this animation, the, the bar behind it is it's on the background. And to make it on the background, you can see here on the merge node, the green input is always the foreground, and here the yellow input is the background. And now we want to have this gray one, this gray background, in the background of, of the orange line. And to do that, select the merge node and press Command or Control T, and you switched the inputs from foreground and background. And now to animate here at this bar, we first go to the last frame where the animation is finished on frame 155, select the rectangle mask and we need a keyframe on center X and Y and on the width. We need these two keyframes because we're gonna reduce the width to zero and then we drag this over here to this position. So this gives the feeling like the bar fills it from, from the left side. So that means at this frame, the bar is full. We go back to frame 130, reduce the width to zero and center X position all the way to here. That means in this 25 frames, the bar fills itself. And that's it for the basic animation. So when we watch it, it just looks like that. Pretty basic animation. And this series is called Bother Smooth Motion Graphics. And this is why we're gonna make it bother smooth now. For that, we open up our splines up here. You can see here, we enable rectangle two and rectangle one. Click here on this little icon, zoom to fit, so you can see all the keyframes we've done. Then with Command or Control A, select all of them, then press F and then press T to open up here this menu. Put the ease in to around 80. So every curve starts a bit faster and then it stops very, very slow. Then you can close the splines. And one last thing we need to do is, of course, we want to have motion blur because you can see the difference here from the left to the right. We have no motion blur here. And here we have a ton of motion blur. So that means select here the rectangle one, go to settings, enable motion blur, quality, shutter angle all the way up and do the same thing with the other rectangle mask. Always make sure to select every rectangle mask or every mask you've created and to enable motion blur. And like that, you have an amazing animation with only one rectangle mask. Hit that like button and tell me in the comments what you think about this new series. With that said, have fun creating and see you in the next one.